Hey guys, it's Nick, uh, 2500 point um, battle report with the Lead Belcher army that I'm working on versus Chris's Orcs and Goblins. Uh, if you only watch the battle reports but not the progress of the minis that I'm converting, feel free to check those videos out. I'm having more fun converting this army than I think I am playing it. It's still an interesting army to play. Um, odd list composition, of course. Um, not the most competitive list despite the amount of Lead Belchers, but yeah, let's get into it. And I apologize, I've been having some issues with my video editing software, so it might be a little uh, choppy with the audio, but also uh, some of these videos, some of these uh, images came in out of order, so um, they might be a little uh, not flowing as nicely. So. so this is what I worked up for, Magic, Signature, Toughness, Troll Guts, and then the Maw. I kept the Maw, I figured I'd... Uh, play around with it. It's it's totally a bust of a spell because so much more can go wrong with it than good I think at times, especially since against orcs and goblins I'm dealing with single wound models where if this backfires and it gets placed on me, d6 multiple wounds strength 7 against ogres is pretty bad. So, Chris has foot, here we go, the hand of Gork, Edbutt, and Curse of the Bad Moon. Um, oh, there's another one coming. But essentially, foot's going to be the issue, so I'm going to make sure I uh, stay away from that. I guess the fireball was from the ruby ring. Standard battle line deployment. This is the list that he brought to Crossroads, and this is the same list I've been working on, proxying the um, some Noblars with Skaven Rats, and then the one Iron Blaster that's not assembled yet. And yeah. So left to right on his side, uh, pretty standard. Um, not even going to go through it, actually. The Iron Blasters are going to be out on the right flank, which is risky because they're not as well protected, but after Chris starts moving, it'll give me flank shots on the Savage Orcs and the Black Orcs that are behind that forest there. There was a Vanguard over here to the right. Chris gets turn one, and we go straight into animosity. Everything passes except the Savage Orcs, which is great because they're the ones that I would like to see far on the back line, so they're just going to chill there for the beginning of the turn. These wolf riders that Vanguard ended up behind the hill. And this is just an overall shot of the movement. Um, the pump wagons didn't seem to get too much further than 8 inches, so it looks like we got a 9 inch move and a 7 inch move, so I'm happy about that. He did pump harder and nothing really came out of it, so. Foot gets off, so I have to dispel it, and I go ahead and do so. This is just a close up shot of the uh, squig herd that Chris prepared for a crossroads. Pretty cool. Most of its, or 50% of its space holders, little rock clusters, um, which came out pretty decent. So um, this is probably the first first game you'll see his entire army painted on the field. So uh, yeah. Shooting kills some Noblars, but with the leadership 9 and reroll, they stick. The Doom Diver flies in and kills off an ogre. And we head into my turn one. These guys just turn around to avoid a rear charge, and at least if he does charge me, he'll take his difficult terrain tests and I'll counter shoot. This is just a overall shot of my movement. Really, I backed up, kept the Noblars in line, and moved the one that lost half of it up to eventually just have to inflict a difficult terrain test check on the Black Orcs. During the magic phase, I try to get off uh, radius troll guts, but Chris denies that. In shooting, you can see this one lead belcher fails to the right, and he turns to face the other direction after um, misfiring and having the rhinox just pull him some random direction. This other one goes to do um, a nice shot onto the flank of the black orcs and tries to hit the pump wagon. I hit the pump wagon, I miss the black orcs, I only do one wound to the pump wagon, which really sucks. So the first two units, uh, the, the left and then the middle iron blast, uh, iron gut units, go ahead and pop a handful of shots at the black orcs. Um, I'm at long range and I didn't roll too great, so I only kill about four or five guys, which I mean is decent, but not for you know 15 lead belchers. Um, the unit to the right, I figured at this point. I didn't really have good luck. I need to get into close range. I figured maybe I'd just finish off the. Um, the pump wagon, and then I proceed to roll like 30 shots against the pump wagon with the eight lead belchers, and then I end up doing like 10 wounds to the freaking um, 
pump wagon, which really sucked because that would have been 10 black orcs dead, so I kind of had to bite that bullet. I mean, it is important that I got rid of that pump wagon because if he pumped harder and somehow started hitting those Noblar units, he would just punch a, a hole through me. So it is good that it was taken out, but I could have used all those hits against the black orcs. So we move into orc turn two. Here's a shot of Chris's movement. Everything's closing in, and the pump wagons get in the way of the savage orcs, which is great. And the black orcs don't move up too much. I think Chris wanted to remain outside of my long, uh, outside of short range, um, so he just didn't move them up. And uh, he had a good reason. I don't remember what it is, but they stay back there. They don't move up full. Foot of Gork goes off, but I have to deny it and use all my Dispel Dice, which allows him to go ahead and do Hand of Gork, allowing the Savage Orcs to leapfrog over the Pump Wagon and get into a nice little charge range. So that's a 40-man strong unit. Not, not very friendly. With shooting, he does a few wounds to the Iron Blasters, but that's about it. So here we got my movement. I go ahead and use that little Nobbler unit to redirect the Savage Orcs, which will be nice. He also take uh, his difficult terrain tests, and everything just kind of backs up, and I get ready to unleash 8 and 7, so 15 shots onto... 15 Blood Belchers worth of shots onto the Savage Orcs. And then the far right unit, the one that's still 8 strong, will probably shoot at the Black Orcs again, I think. So, But uh, just making a little castle here. My spells all get denied again, so I go into shooting. Iron Blaster goes to shoot a uh, diagonal shot down the Savage Orcs. Kill looks like 4, 5, 6, which is nice. And then the 15 Lead Bilchers proceed to peel off a whole other rank uh, and a half. So it looks like he's down to 19 guys, so that's uh, encouraging. So besides my shooting, I really don't do too much... Also my turn, so we're on to Chris's turn three. These guys go in, which is awesome. He only takes one or two wounds for difficult terrain, so not a big deal. Same here. Um, he kills maybe one or two black orcs from difficult terrain. So here is the movement for Chris's turn. And the Black Orcs are still pretty far away, so I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, even if he overruns, on average he'll go ahead 7 inches, which is fine by me. But as long as he got choked up for a turn and uh, I got to counter shoot, I actually think my counter shooting Noblars killed a Savage Orc and a Black Orc each, which is amazing because they're like hitting on sixes and wounding on sixes. So good for them. Oh, yeah. Um,. This happens a few times. Uh, double ones with the pump wagon for pump harder. Um, it turns around and runs away. Chris got a good roll for Foot of Gork, so I was unable to deny it this turn. And as you can see, there's plenty of fresh targets for him to choose from. He goes ahead and picks the Iron Guts, which is the bunker unit, who has already taken four wounds from Doom Divers or something. Five more wounds are inflicted. And why would Gork only stop once? I uh, five or six was rolled, so it w went again. And killed a couple of lead belchers. And by a couple, I mean 17 wounds worth. Leaving one and a half guys. Man, D3 wound strength 7. Foot's tough against ogres, so this is uh, going to start causing issues now that I've got uh, a whole unit just kind of wiped out in the magic phase, so yeah, that happens. Foot, foot happens. But foot can sometimes be mildly forgiving, so Chris rolls a one, and I drop it on the squake herd. Um, not too many targets because a lot of things were stuck in combat. I could have went for the bunker unit and maybe swayed into the um, into the uh, Black Orcs, but I didn't. I went against the um, Squirt Card. But keep that in mind because if I did stop the Bunker unit, it actually would have changed the game pivotally later, and you will see why. But in hindsight, I, you know, couldn't have told, I couldn't have known any better, so. Yay, there's one Fanatic which 
uh, rolled like four inches, which is fine. He could have taken out a lead belcher, a iron blaster, no problem. But I thought this list had two, but I guess it was just one. But that's okay. Rock Lava goes ahead and gets the job done. These wolf riders that charged the Noblars earlier turn actually killed the Noblars and overran. The Noblars are really bad. They like weapon skill 2, strength 2. They're pretty shitty. And this looks absolutely perfect. Chris just goes ahead and kills all the Noblars. He is frenzied, so he is forced to overrun, which is going to give me a real sweet flank charge against him. But he goes ahead and rolls a 10, and I... I'm no longer able to see him, so he is just barely out of um, flank charge. I, I, he's out of my 40 to 5 degree arc on that flank, which really, really sucks. I was really banking on uh, that setup with the Noblars redirecting him and giving me the flank charge because, I mean, I could have continued shooting at them, but honestly, a flank charge probably would have done them in. He would have only had six attacks back. I mean, Savage Orc's pretty good. They could probably kill two ogres if he got all of his hits through, but you know what? Impact hits, stomps and everything, flank charge, it just would have been a mess for him, so uh, I was kind of banking on that, but oh well. And for this turn, this is the third Nibelar unit to get run down, so essentially the Black Orcs are closing in on my lines. So finally I get my turn three. Um, Swift reform with the La Belchers to the um, left side of the table edge so I can shoot up those Savage Orcs. And the Noblars move up full and get their, uh, and do the job that they're supposed to. They're going to tie him up for one full round uh, and have to suffer two dangerous terrain tests. So they can take um, six, seven, eight La Belcher shots into the Black Orcs. And uh, the other Noblars go ahead and get into the way of the uh, Squig Herd, which I figured it would be good to tie him up for a turn instead of let them get too close to me. So during the magic phase I took a chance and used the maw against the uh, Savage Orcs and kill a handful. And then this, then this actual picture, all those guys getting pulled off, there's nine of them uh, in there. That's actually from a side shot with the um, Iron Blaster. So I guess with this list... Um, Really getting those Iron Blasters on the flanks will be good against at least any hordes or specifically Chris's army where he's got these giant hordes of orcs. Being able to take out a rank of 9 or 10 black orcs, especially since Iron Blasters have that 2 dice um, bounce and take the highest one, is pretty effective. So I was able to take out a whole bunch of black orcs this turn. Along with the Savage Orcs, so I'm able to knock them down to 4. So I kill about 9 guys, I believe. So here's a shot at the end of my turn. Uh, the Black Orcs are s dwindling down, which is excellent. There's barely any Savage Orcs left, so I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty good position right now. Uh, as long as Foot doesn't get off or some shooting, you know, knocks my uh, bunker unit off the battlefield. So we're going in for Chris's turn four. Uh, this herd goes into the Noblars. This is the one Noblar unit with the actual banner. Uh, I only have one with a command banner in there. Uh, he takes a handful of difficult terrain tests, which I'm happy about, and he fails them. The fast cav going against these uh, ten Noblars. One dies to counter shooting, one dies to difficult terrain tests, so I'm only fighting three, which is nice. Black Orcs go in against the Noblar unit, which is fine. There's two heroes in there, so that's a pretty important unit that's close to being dead. Compulsory. <laughs> He rolls double ones again, so the thing's going to go ahead and turn backwards and proceeds to roll like 18, so it's on like the back table edge, which is fine by me. And the other compulsory, this guy gets pretty close with 7 inches, but uh, no cigar on the Noblars. So the bunker unit of 20... Night Goblins and the BSB go ahead and move in here, which usually doesn't phase me and I usually ignore that but it actually plays an important role in the remainder of the game and these night goblins move up these are usually the ones I'm more interested in because they're a big roadblock and get stuck fighting them for a while as long as they're steadfast and now this iron blaster has a nice shot through the night goblins into the fanatic 
into the squig herd, so I might make that shot in my turn. Foot proceeds to go off again, which is annoying. Iron Gut drops. Gork never stops once, so it goes again. But it scatters and doesn't hit anything. And then the third time he rolls one and I proceed to place it, which, again, I figured, why bother with the bunker? It's just 20 stupid night goblins. I can get more surface area with this. I end up scattering five inches, which means I wouldn't have hit the bunker if I chose it. But in hindsight, I'm just upset I didn't try to take out his BSB in that bunker unit. I went for this stupid move which really didn't do anything point wise so yeah I kill like I don't know maybe 12 guys so this is the iron gut unit and the painted guy is the slaughter master he has a wound on him from the remaining of the shooting phase essentially with the um, doom divers and then the standard for the unit has one wound left so this unit's uh, down to the wire I somehow kill a black orc, but I get mowed down so they're into the second unit now. The herd mows down the one unit and moves through the forest. These guys continue to fight it out. And then we move into my turn four. Uh, I go ahead and charge the fast cab that are just getting in the way of the savage orcs, which at this point there's five, six, seven savage orcs left, so that should be easy. Uh, the question here is, do I stay and just shoot the savage orcs and maybe not kill them and let them charge me and then kill them later? I thought this was a good move, charging into the fast cab and then moving into the black orcs. Um, let me know what you think. What would you have done? Along with that charge, I went ahead and threw six lead belchers into the flank of the black orcs, which, again, is questionable. I thought it was a good idea. Let me know what you guys think you would have done. I mean, they didn't really have anything to shoot at this turn. Long range shot on the squig herd would have been fine, I guess. But at this point, avoiding the squig herd is better than actually fighting it, so I figured I would shoot at something else. But a flank charge with the ogres would have been great over here to just kind of solidify what's going on with the Noblars, but if I waited a turn then maybe he can kill the Noblars and I could go ahead and shoot at them or something next turn, but it's the decision I made, I had to stick with it, so the BSB and the um, five iron, uh, five lead belchers are in there on the flank. So you can see that there's a nice shot here for the iron blaster to go ahead and clear through some night goblins, the fanatic and the squig herd, but I go ahead and roll misfire and he goes ran he runs some random direction so I won't even be able to charge the night goblins next turn because even though they would be steadfast, if I can flank charge him and do some impact hits and kill some guys, they're still shitty leadership, so they're nowhere near general BSP. I could potentially break him, but he decided to misfire. And for your viewing pleasure, this is just another angle overhead of what's going on. And this is where the game starts to get a little funky. I kill the hero that was on the side, which was the um, the shaman, the night goblin shaman that was on the edge. So my impact hits, which was only like two guys, were distributed amongst the unit. So I kill the black orcs, but I kill the hero too. But somehow he ends up sticking. I don't even remember what he rolled. I mean, he killed two Noblars and might have done a wound to a, an orc, uh, an ogre, so that's three wounds. But I went in with a flank charge and a charge and a BSB. So, I mean, it was close, but he must have rolled low enough to stick, which is an issue. I really thought I had this here. So I rolled like a 10 against uh, for my charge against the fast cab, the wolf riders. So I had D3 impact hits for the four guys in the front at strength 5, so I obliterated them. Um, so I overrun into the hill here and hit the savage orcs, no problem. So there's five, six, seven guys. This should be easy. I should kill them, and then I should be able to reform and head back towards the battle. So now we've run into Chris's turn 5. He goes ahead and charges that bunk unit into the flank of my Noblars, because after killing everyone except the one caster lord and the BS uh, the unit uh standard bearer 
I made enough room for him to just flank charge me, so that wasn't originally an option, but now it is since there's no guys left. Here's the shot of the battlefield. I really have n no guys left on my back line. Um, in the magic phase, he goes ahead and does Hand of Gork and moves that Squig Herd right in between my two units of two and the unit that's in combat, facing the unit that's in combat. So even if I win, I'm going to have to turn around and face these guys and have to deal with them um, in my turn, I guess. So um, I'm not too worried, though, because my uh, lead belchers that are in combat with the Savage Orcs should be able to crush them and turn and also deal with those guys. Or so I thought, I guess. I mean, this is stupid. With all these attacks and impact hits, I only kill three Savage Orcs. And he goes ahead and does nine wounds to me, so I actually end up losing this combat somehow, which is a mess. I really thought I can run in here and kill these guys, which we can revisit the question, should I have ever done that? Should I have just sat there and shot them in close range and probably have had better odds? But I haven't played Ogres enough in a while to realize that even four Savage Orcs, after impact hits, four Savage Orcs can sit here and just demolish you. Uh, I mean, I was hitting on fours, wounding on fours, which isn't great. He was hitting me on threes, wounding on twos, um, or wounding on threes, actually. But, man, that's rough. So that was very upsetting, so I wasn't feeling too happy about that. You can see here, that's where the squig herd ended up, as described prior. Um, and look at this. I've got 20 night goblins. Not a big deal. I got my three doblars, whatever. And then... I should be able to, you know, do some damage here with the ogres. Well, there's really not a lot of them in contact. I kill the blessed black orc, so I get full points for that. I can't do anything to the shaman, whatever. But he ends up coming in with the flank charge, the three combat res, his BSB, which cancels out my BSB, and uh, killing a noblar or two. I end up losing pretty badly. He outranks me, so I'm not stubborn or steadfast or anything. I end up losing this combat, and then I proceed to get run down after breaking by the shaman. So I break, and the shaman runs down my like six ogres, and the BSB gets killed, and then the noblars run and die also. So at this point, I just called it. I'm like, this is this is silly. I I'm pretty sure I had the game up until this point, because yeah. I mean, this is just evidence that these guys should just not get in combat, especially against orcs. Five orcs is enough to do massive, massive amounts of damage. I just, uh, I should have stayed back and shot and did what the lead belchers are supposed to do and shoot, but I got a little greedy. I figured get some flank charges, get some impact hits, I, I'd be in good shape, but that story changed. And this is just after everyone cries and runs away. All those ogres run away from those little goblins. And this is just the closing shot as I proceed to just hand the game over to Chris. I mean, we didn't calculate victory points or anything. I mean, I could have slowly killed the rest of those savage orcs. I could have killed those fast cab, but I mean, my general and those lead belchers could have rear-charged the, the squig herd and, you know, killed them. I guess maybe I could have caused some issues there. I mean, I could have used the uh, lead belchers to turn and shoot at the shaman that's running around. I mean, there's some things I could have done, but at this point, it was kind of a turn off to see my guys just run and uh, hide. But uh, I mean, it could have been close. So maybe we should have finished playing it out because the Savage Orcs alone, those would have been a nice chunk of points. Really, he would have been sitting with the entire Night Goblin unit bunker unit, uh, there's a chance I could have killed the, that squig herd. I mean, there's so few of them, and I'd only be in contact with goblins, but uh, I just got really pissed off, so I was like, hey, you know, good job, Chris, you, you got the game here. But um, the Iron Blaster was still running around at the end of the game, but he, he had some superiority with his shooting that even if he got to run his uh, turn six, he could have doom divered some of my uh, heroes or my uh, remaining units for you know closing in on the points but uh, this list is definitely still a lot of fun uh, me and Chris had a small discussion about how there's really no end game card that this 
list composition has like it's very defensive it has some shooting it's great with the two cannons the magic is decent if it gets off in terms of extra toughness or bubble regen or uh, you know the maw which I did get off twice and to my surprise I didn't kill myself with it but there's really no way towards the late game to just clean up there's no sweep or anything so but uh thank you guys for watching this uh battle report with the lead belcher army and then uh comments or ideas please feel free to leave them below and i'll see you guys in the next game